Yeah, it's interesting, they've got good evening here, so good afternoon and welcome to November 5th special meeting of council. The city of Parksville recognizes the Coast Salish peoples and their traditional territory upon which we gather with gratitude. I need a mover and a seconder for the recommendation that the November 5th, 2019 special council meeting agenda be approved. Councillor Wilson and seconded by Councillor Greer. All those in favor? Approved. We don't have minutes? Okay. Uh, correspondence, we have three pieces of correspondence. Um, I need a mover and a seconder to uh, that the correspondence be received. Moved by Councillor O'Brien, second by Councillor Wilson. All those in favor? Approved. We have one staff presentation who's going to take less than five minutes, he tells me. And um, we'll go from there. Mr. Butterworth, please. Thank you, Your Worship. Welcome to the 2020 Provisional Budget presentation. First of uh, several presentations or several meetings that will be taking place. Um, for this presentation, uh, this is just an overview. We're going to be covering a lot of ground today. Um, we're focusing today on the general fund and the water fund and the sanitary sewer fund uh, will be um, at the next meeting. So today is just to focus on the general fund. Uh, so we'll be going through, uh, I'll just give some background information. We have um, some new councillors. Uh, this is their second budget meeting, so I'm just going to give you a little quick refresher uh, why we're doing budgets and what we have to do in our budgets. Um, I'll go through the building blocks of this budget that we used, and then we'll go through various um, departments, corporate services, protective services, and the other departments. Um, I'll run through a five-year capital plan. I provided that to council ahead of time, and it's very long, so I'm not going to, we'll click on to it in the presentation and basically just answer any questions council may have about the capital plan, because it's very long to go through uh, line by line, but we can certainly answer any questions that council may have about that. Uh, then we'll look at the bylaw. This is the draft provisional financial plan bylaw. So this is what council in the end will be giving their readings to and adopting. So it's just a sample for council to see what it looks like. Um, you, did, you have approved one already in the spring and so this is just a refresher again on what uh, ultimately you'll be adopting. And then we'll go through some departmental costs that are on a chart and look at our accumulated surplus and then some other items for council's consideration. So there's a lot of stuff there. Uh, my five minutes are up, are we done? <laughs> uh, so financial plan background, so it's section 165 of the community charter, which sets out um, why we're doing this or why we have to go through this process. Um, it requires a five-year uh, budget. So we're doing 2020 to 2024, and it has to be adopted by May 15th. Uh, so you say, why are we doing it now? It has to be adopted by May 15th. So the City of Parksville's process is we do a provisional plan, and this is where we do most of the heavy lifting. Um, a lot of new projects that may have come up, uh, changes, uh, changes from council, changes from staff. Uh, we do it now because the spring is, uh, with year end and other things, it's, it's really a busy time. So it's, if we do this stuff now, then we get a lot of the heavy lifting out. Also. If there's a new project that's come up, whether it be from staff or from council, and we get approval now, we can actually start uh, running on that in January. If we wait till May 15th, we can't actually start that project till after May 15th. So um, by doing a lot of this stuff now, we can get started on some new projects if they get approved earlier on. Uh, the final plan is the one that we will adopt by May 15th. Um, that incorporates our tax increases, um, assessment increases. We don't know what they are right now. We're just in this particular plan. It's, uh, it's an educated guess on what they are. We won't know what that is until we do the final plan and that'll give us what our actual taxes are. Uh, it also allows us then to uh, projects that did not get completed this year or that may be in progress will carry forward the remaining funds of those budgets into that budget. And also things invariably come up between now and May 15th or March, 
some new idea, something will come up that will need to be added into that budget. So that's what the, we do with the final plan and then the amended plan is something that throughout the year changes happen, um, whether it be through council resolution or uh, changes to a project or a budget increase that's needed or whatever it might be. Uh, the amended plan is usually done and approved in December. A lot of the items or most of the items on the amended plan Council's already seen or approved. It's just a matter of incorporating them into the document. We do have to incorporate all those items into our financial plan. So we have an amended plan that we do later in the year. So we're doing this budget process right now, provisional plan, but we'll also be in December bringing something to council at a regular council meeting for the amended plan, uh, which there's not a lot of changes. So it'll be a matter of bringing that forward to council to give free readings and adopt that uh, amended plan for 2019. Um, so in the municipalities, we use fund accounting. So today, as I said, we're going over the general fund. So that's uh, where the majority of our works take place. We have administration, council, finance, planning, bylaw, fire department, police, uh, public works, engineering. They're all in the general fund. Uh, roads, drainage, capital projects, they're in there. And then we have the water fund the sanitary sewer fund, and we also have a number of sub funds for AWS, ERWS, uh, PCTC is a joint venture for this building with us and two partners, and also an equipment reserve. So, uh, so we keep separate funds for each of those items. We have seven different funds that we use, and today is just general fund, which is our biggest fund by far. So the building blocks for this plan, uh, I brought them out of the 2019 to 2023 plan. So in that plan, we had 3% tax increase for 2020 and a 3.5% tax increase for 2021 to 2024. So we've started with that as our uh, starting point for this budget. The inflation rate used is 2% for operations. Uh, Canada's inflation rate was 1.9% September to September. Uh, a big portion of our operations is staff wages and our negotiated agreement with the union is 2% increases, so we've used 2% as our inflation for the four, five years. And for capital, as council, council has seen, a number of capital projects have been coming back to council for budget increases. Um, we've used a higher, slightly higher inflation rate for that, 2.5%, um, just because at this point in time, uh, a lot of our capital, it, it seems like our budgets are not keeping up with uh, how much the costs are going up. So, And the population range for this model is uh, 13,249 in 2020 and it builds to 13,945 in 2024. I will say subsequent to the model development, I've got the numbers now from the election and the, and the, and the growth and I'm probably a hundred and something people short in 2020. Uh, I couldn't change the model because it would have changed all the numbers that I'd given to council. So when we do the final, I will have updated numbers. We tend to update this when we get a census and then we, we use our projections of growth um, to build our population. And the reason I'm putting this in here is because one of these years, um, not too far away, we're gonna hit 15,000 in one of the years and that's when our RCMP costs will go to from 70% funded by us to 90% funded by us. Uh, it's a significant increase and right now in our model that's uh, projected in 2031 I believe or 2030 one of those years and I think it has a seven or eight percent tax increase associated with that uh, so it's a very big increase because it's a lot of dollars so um, so the population is quite relevant for when we hit that number um, it, it it's going to be a challenge without a large tax increase Okay, so anyways, the PowerPoint isn't the prettiest PowerPoint. I'll start with that right now. It's a lot of numbers. There isn't really an easy way to present a lot of numbers to a large group of people without using spreadsheets. Um, I could individually list everyone, but this PowerPoint would be 120 pages long. So uh, there's a lot of information and a lot of numbers here. This information was provided to council ahead of time. Uh, right now we're on, if you take Appendix A, if you look at your Appendix A that you have, um, this 
mirrors what's in Appendix A, except Appendix A also has little explanations off on the side to the right of 2024. So as we go through this, I'll be reading off what some of the explanations are on these items and council can follow along with this. So if you look at the top, it says Appendix, if you look on my titles here, it says see Appendix A, page one. So that's where this is coming from. So you should all have that. And I believe there's some copies out in the gallery as well for that. So the property tax totals that we have are ranging from, with the 3% increase and the 3.5% increases and growth, uh, 14,101,000 in 2020 and growing to 16,779,000 in 2024. Um, what we're gonna, these are, this area here that we're discussing here is corporate services operating adjustments. So it's not capital, it's just the operating adjustments and minor capital items. Um, so corporate services includes council admin, you can see there HR, IT, communications, bylaw and finance. So we have um, the changes from the previous plan we had. Uh, IT software contingency, we reduced that by 20,000 a year. We previously had $40,000 a year as a software contingency for things that come up during the year that we cannot predict ahead of time. Um, we found that we haven't been using that amount. We don't need that amount, so it's been reduced down to 20,000 from 40,000. So there's a $20,000 budget decrease from our previous plan. Um, a couple things were added during the year. Um, there's the pool study, which is a council resolution, and the 75th anniversary uh, celebration, another council resolution in 2019. Uh, so those both came from council resos. Uh, the information technology backup systems is another minor change. There is a spending package with that, which council has all the spending package, and that's Essentially just a, we did have 10,000 in the budget and this is a budget increase to 15,000 for that from 10,000. So it's just showing us 5,000, but it's a $15,000 item. Uh, other new items in corporate services and communications, we have the Voyant Alert System. This is the ongoing maintenance of the system, $3,200 a year. Um, we have the, an IT software maintenance contracts this actually went through council, this item, um, to get pre-approval for this. It's relating to Microsoft 365 licenses, and that's a $47,000 item annually. And GIS software, the other item, the 19,000, is uh, GIS software licenses that we need. Um, we need that, We're, we have new GIS staff starting, or going to be starting and we need the software to keep them busy. Further items, uh, these are the capital adjustments in corporate services. So in, we had a website redesign scheduled for 2020 and we've moved it to do it over two years. So it's a $20,000 item. We moved uh, half of it into 2021. So there's a reduction in the 2020 budget from 20,000 to 10 and 10,000 added to the 2021 budget. Uh, the aerial photos, uh, this is a 2019 budget item that's been moved forward to 2020. We actually piggyback on the RDNs uh, when they do their photos and they didn't do their photos this year, it's my understanding, so that's been pushed out to 2020. And server replacement, this item was in the previous plan, but it's an increase in the cost of the servers by $20,000. So that's the end of corporate services. Uh, if you would, uh, just for a second, we're gonna open it up and see if there are any questions in the, uh, in the audience for the first page. So anybody in the back that has any questions, uh, please just stand up and we'll Take those questions, Lucky will try to answer them the best he can. If there's any, feel free. If there's something you're not understanding or uh, unsure of, now's the time to ask, because it doesn't get easier, it gets more complicated as we go. All right, you've done a really good job because everybody seems to understand so far. <laughs> or I've confused them all. Yes. <laughs> 
Uh, okay, protective services. So this is fire, police, and the emergency program. Uh, operating adjustments. This is a, uh, see Appendix A, page two now. So you're on to page two. And so the first items here are spending packages. Uh, first item is a fire item. So there is a spending package that was provided last week to council. Uh, firefighter medical assessments, uh, $10,000 a year uh, plus inflation. Um, and then $100,000 for a fire service review. That was previously, that was already in the budget. It's just uh, because it's come up to the current year, there's a spending package provided. Emergency program, we have a group lodging supply grant we've applied for, or group lodging supply. So we've applied for a grant for that. And the lodging supplies is 25,000. So that should be a net cost of zero to the city, providing we get the grant. If we don't get the grant, we wouldn't be move ahead with that. Um, and emergency food supply. So those are all spending packages. The emergency uh, food supply is, is for the, if we had to call, set up the emergency room for any length of time, there would be uh, some hydrated food that would be available to the people staffing the room. And other items, these items here, I've just put them on there because they're fairly large items, just to note for council. They were in the previous plan. They're all working their way forward so that next year, as you can see, the fire department will have in there requesting another staff person. Uh, in two years, the RCMP is looking at another RCMP officer. So just showing them there now, uh, make sure council's aware of them. They move their way forward each year. So. So the capital adjustments for protective services, this again is on Appendix A, page two. Um, we've got the fire department training ground curbing and paving. Council saw this last year, it was pushed out from 2019 to 2020. Uh, it was in at 110, now it's in at 130. Uh, we have auto extrication, heavy rescue tools, 50,000. This was in the previous budget. Again, it's just worked its way forward. So there's a spending package for that. Uh, this other item is a new item, I believe it, I think I saw something about that at the council meeting last night, the digital fire training system. There's a grant they're applying for for that and the cost of the system is 42,000 and the grant uh, for that if we're successful is 25,000. Um, there's a addition to the fire hall scheduled out in 2024 and this is an increase to that addition of the cost of that addition, or the expansion, not the addition, just an expansion of the fire hall. Um, and we're gonna fund that from land sale reserve, that additional cost. So it's showing there in two places in 2024, 900,000 funding from the land sale reserve and, uh, and then 900,000 for the extra cost of that expansion. Uh, firefighters also, they've delayed their new photocopier by three years out to 2023. And other new items that are fairly large, they don't show up in the five years, but I'm just putting them here for council to be aware of. They do show up in our 20 year capital plan, $50,000 for another uh, uh, pickup truck and for a, a fourth pickup truck and 200,000 for a special ops support van uh, and cost increases to each of the three engines by $150,000 each, and that increases their cost up to $900,000 from $750,000. They're, uh, they're not cheap, those fire engines. And that's it for the protective services capital and operating changes. Okay, let's stop and see if there's any questions from anything that anybody has seen so far. All right, Chief, you're getting away easy so far. <laughs> you said I only have 10 minutes, so we gotta go through this fast. Passed my time already. Parks and facilities um, operating again. So um, we're moving forward next year, putting parks and facilities together. There's um, currently a posting out there for a manager of these positions. And parks used to be 
under operations and facilities with its own little entity as well. Uh, now they're putting together under one manager, so I've lumped them together on this uh, in this uh, presentation, and also in our uh, in our budget bylaw, and they're now put together. So the operating adjustments, we've uh, the Parksville wetlands. Um, further on, a little bit further on, we're going to see that there's a request for funds for a configuration study. Um, so there was quite a bit of money in there f uh, in the new in the wetlands for materials, and so this con so we're pulling that out pending the configuration study to determine what we want to do in there, what needs to be done in there, and then at that time we can determine what the budget should be in there. So. Um, by pulling the money, some of the uh, material money out and some of the labor costs out, uh, it's basically just maintenance at this point in time. Uh, new trails, other things that may be built will come after the configuration study and it's determined what should be done there. It's a tree potter and iPad 4800, Springwood washroom building. This is a furnace upgrade. Um, the PCCC operating grant, um, this is a reduction of their grant to $110,000 per year. Uh, demolition of Shelley Center. So this had come up. We've got Shelley Road Center set in the plan for not to do any major repairs to it. So it was in the plan as to be demolished pending major repairs. They, they haven't happened. The building's still in half decent shape. So we just pushed that out a couple of years and that will keep continue to get pushed out until such time as there's a major roof repair or some other major repair and at that time we'll bring it to council to decide are we going to fix this thing or are we going to tear this thing down and uh, and make it into a larger park or whatever we're going to do with it. So, um, so that's just in the budget. It's been there because if we do demolish it then there's budget monies. Um, if we keep pushing it out then we'll just push it out. So. PCTC emergency generator. This item is just, uh, it was a $60,000 item scheduled for 2021. Um, it was scheduled under, or put in our minor capital budget. We've since determined that it's a capital item. Um, so we've, we're just taking it out of the operating and putting, you'll see it further on on the next page in capital. PCTC reserve allocation. Right now we put it $23,000 aside each year for um, a maintenance reserve on this building and the 23,000 as we'll see further on we're going to have to dip into that uh, maintenance reserve so I'm proposing that the maintenance reserve, reserve be increased to $30,000 a year to um, start building it back up again after the uh, large reductions that are going to be coming out of it as you'll see on the next page or further on in this page. Uh, minor capital there was some PCCC PCC appliances, 25,000 scheduled for this year. We've taken that out. And uh, painting the exterior of this building has been deferred to the final um, to determine exactly what we're going to do there. So that'll be brought forward again in the final if something needs to be done there. So we've just pulled that out of the budget at this point in time. So those are the changes from the 2019 to 2023 plan. Oops. Um, <coughs> Further on down here, so these are some new items, new spending packages. Again, these are uh, all have spending packages attached to them. So the playground equipment, it's an increase to the annual budget from 29,500 for playground equipment to 50,000 is the request. Uh, community park circulation, traffic circulation study, uh, $50,000. The wetlands configuration study, $50,000. I've talked about that already. And the facilities, so this one uh, in 2022, it was scheduled for roof replacement or full roof replacement. They now determined that um, there's a lot of patches and patchwork on one section, the flat section of the roof, and it should be done next year. The cost of that is, the city's share of the cost of that is $160,000. It's a $250, estimated at a $250,000 repair. Our partners will be picking up the difference. Um, and I'm uh, proposing that we fund that from our PCTC reserve that the city's put aside 100,000 of it so that the city's, the taxpayer will pay 60 of that and the reserve will fund 100,000 of that. And that's why I'm requesting that we increase that reserve from $23,000 a year to 30,000. Um, so the second half of that roof is in 2024. That's the slope section. It's not as in a bad a shape. And so again, another 
250,000 with the city's share being 160,000 of that. And again, funding uh, a good portion of that out of the PCTC reserve. So that's the operating. Appendix A, page three. Sorry, I should have told you that Lucky, sooner. Lucky, if I could, I have yep. a question if you go back to it. PC, and it's probably just me not understanding it, but uh, the uh, roof replacement, you've set down our share is 160,000. And then you've said you've taken $100,000 out. So is our share $260,000? No, no, the reserve funding is actually a revenue. I've just got it lumped together with the cost section just to show it. I just put it together with the project. So the reserve funding is pulling money out of a reserve, so it's actually a revenue. Should it, I under, okay, that's what I thought might be there, but should that not be bracketed then, the 100,000? Uh, no, because it's, a, it's an increase to the revenue, so. Yeah, it could be bracketed, but I'm not decreasing it, I'm increasing it. So I don't put brackets around it unless I'm decreasing it, so. No, I'm, I, I'm, I just didn't put it in a revenue section. I just lumped the minor capital together. I could have said minor capital revenues and put reserve funding, but I just put okay. it down there with that item to keep them together. All right, so, we can talk about so, that. So it isn't a cost, it's just, uh, it's, it's a reserve funding. So it's a funding source, $100,000. Okay, I'm, I'm not, I'm not being, I'm not clear on that, but I'll, I'll talk to you later on it if that's the case, thanks. Okay. Councillor Greer. Thank you, Worship, to the lucky. Um, just, I'm just questioning the um, community park traffic circulation study. How many studies have we done on that? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it seems like we've done a number of studies. Anybody back there know? Right, right now, I think we have one community park uh, master plan study. We did one five or seven, eight years ago, and then there was another one done last year or the year before. 2017, and then last year was the, mas the community, or not the community park, the parks master plan was done last year, and the community park master plan was done the year so before. So why are we spending another 50,000 this year? Who can? Uh, if I may, Your Worship, uh, so out of the uh, community park master plan, it was it was one of the recommendations was to uh, do a circulation study in there, so that's kind of coming out of uh, out of that master plan. There was no real project identified in the community park master plan for that, but uh, it was recognized that a circulation study was needed. And, and what's that going to give us? Uh, that will give us um, an idea of uh, potential projects. Um, that are going to happen in the park to uh, to um, address the concern for uh, uh, accessibility for uh, uh, mobility impaired people and uh, and kids and everything else. Okay, thank you. Cool. Um, if I may, Your Worship, just to provide a bit of additional background, um, we are anticipating at the staff level that several of the parks items would be refined or reviewed by the parks committee. Um, in time for final budget, but this particular <laughs> item and a number of others were identified as um, Director Figuera mentioned through the parks um, community park implementation plan, which actually had a council resolution um, prior to this council's term. So it was in September of 2018. And so some of the items will be um, carryovers from that. And I think um, it would be appropriate for the committee to look at them in detail and, and provide current input on them. I think what I'm hearing is that we're gonna sharpen our pencil a little bit on those. Okay, good, all right. Any other questions while we're, while we're stopped here? The audience is being awful quiet. If you have any, anything at all, please feel free. All right, then okay, let's, so let's keep going. Thank you, Lucky. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, so operating and we get into the parks and facilities capital adjustments. So we've got, uh, the first part here, I've broken the, now I've broken the revenues out and the expenditures out. Hopefully this is clear. Um, so Park Shelley, uh, I'll go into the expenditures first and cover the revenues after. Uh, in the parks, we've got Foster Park Fence, uh, 42,000. This is for a replacing the aging fence there that's uh, falling apart and has various holes in it. Uh, Springwood Park Ball Field Fence and Irrigation. This might have been one of the ones that was at the council meeting last night. Um, and Shelley Creek Bridge, uh, so this item here is in the trail up near the top end of Corfield. There's a trail there and there's a little bridge there that's um, just two little 
I don't know, almost boards um, that are just going over this that are pretty rickety, so it's a proposal to replace that with a proper safer bridge. And that would be funded from DCCs, or 118,000, that would be funded from DCCs, which is what the revenue item is up above. Um, and community park, beach fest parking, $60,000. I believe this might have been out of the community park plan as well. Uh, it's also proposed to push out the actual building of Rath Trevor Trail, which was supposed to be happening in 2020 to 2021. And that's up in the revenue area again, Parks Rath Trevor Trail, pushing the DCC funding for that out one year. So uh, we have a reduction in 2020 of the DCC funding and the cost, and those are pushed out to 2021. And in the facilities, uh, we've got the PCTC emergency generator. This is what I talked about earlier. It was in minor capital for $60,000. Uh, the cost is uh, $100,000 for the city's share of that. And it's uh, moved forward one year to 2020. The generator needs to be replaced. And that's... Councillor O'Brien. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, a question through to Mr. Butterworth, please. Uh, just, just backing up on the Rath Trevor Trail development, Lucky, you mentioned anyways that that has been uh, pushed back from 2020 now to 2021. Um, is the reason because the DCC funding that's uh, currently on hand is not adequate to do that, or why is the reason that it's been pushed out to 2021? If you may, Your Worship, uh, can I defer that to the Acting Director of Engineering? To the mic, please. If I may, through your worship, uh, the project was pushed out uh, to accommodate some priority projects in the engineering department for this year. One of them includes the uh, uh, significant efforts around asset management to update our capital plan. Uh, the current current uh, long-range plan has been done a number of years back, and we're just getting towards the uh, the latter end of that, and so we're having to. Uh, pull back uh, some of the uh, the workload on the engineering to just allow for that to uh, to occur to to make room for the long range planning. Um, so that's that's why it's been pushed out a year. Question. Okay, please. If I may, your worship, just a follow up to Mr. Doxy. Uh, so you're saying the asset management plan is taking priority to it. Uh, to the Rath Trevor Trail connection. So I'm just wondering, uh, what is your uh, uh, finished completion date for the asset management plan? What do you anticipate then to be uh, that to be completed by? Um, <clears throat> well, we it may not be completed for 2020, but we should have a significant enough effort that we should have a, a regenerated capital plan for 2020. Um, ongoing capital asset management is going to be um, it's going to be a living uh, document or a living. Um, uh, type of project that has to be done or uh, revisited every every few years. Um, it'll be basically be a way of, of life and a way of budgeting uh, from an operating and a, as well as a capital perspective uh, when, once it's up and running. Could you just describe quickly what the asset management plan actually looks like? What is that actually incurring other than the obvious terminology here? Um, what, it, what it looks like is breaking down the city's infrastructure. So um, think of it in terms of, let's say, a city street block from, uh, we would name the city block and it would be from a node to a node. That information is broken down into uh, a spreadsheet uh, based on the various components and then they're given a life cycle. Um, and, and along with that, we would then add in things like operating and maintenance cost and, and those depreciating um, values of the asset, along with the inflating um, values of effort that are needed to maintain and, and operate that asset. Um, and so at the end of the day, um, the, long, the long term plan behind the, the outcome of capital asset management plan is uh, a much more refined long range uh, set of budget documents that will help steer the operating expenditures as well as the capital expenditures. So it, uh, I don't know if that's a, a very good explanation, but it's basically a very big spreadsheet that breaks down all of our assets into their various component classes and parts and uh, gives them a, a life cycle um, and breaks it down to a, a per year um, deflationary um, expenditure that we need to put away towards asset renewal. Just, if I, if I could, I'll be with you in a second, Councillor Chandler. 
just to let everybody know, and, and it was a good, good question, Councillor O'Brien, because it, this morning I uh, had a meeting with the Parks and Trails uh, for the RDN, and I have asked them to put on their agenda for the next um, uh, board meeting uh, a resolution that will, in fact, um, have them pay for the pathway that once it hits the river, they would pay to go across the river and down down the, the road through um, Sam Periel's properties over to the road that leads into Rath Trevor. So that, that's gonna tie in with all of this. That won't get done in 2020 either. So, I mean, we're, but at least we can get it started and get that carried through because that's the important part is to get it from there to there. So um, hopefully we can, we will have better answers before we get to the final, final um, budgets in March on this. Thank you, uh, through your worship, to um, Acting uh, Director of Engineering, uh, Joe Doxey. Um, I just wanted to ask if doing that project, obviously with the, uh, um, the summary that you have to do, um, is there any way of, of doing the two in conjunction with each other? Um, I guess so that, that we're not delaying the entire thing. We could do half of it, half of the, stu the study, and, uh, and do them both in, in, in unison. If I may, through your worship. Um, it, um, short answer, yes. The long answer is uh, it would impact uh, the timelines for delivery and the, and the level of detail that we're able to provide. Um, it's like maybe speaking back towards the asset management, one thing is is it really changes how we think about budgeting, uh, breaking it down into uh, kind of a, a line item a spreadsheet level, um, whereas right now every project is a, a physic physical standalone project where somebody has to go in and uh, break down every project uh, based on a name that's existing that was created back in say 2007, 2008. Um, and so, not every uh, piece of infrastructure is in the current system. And, and so um, going to uh, changing the way we think about how we organize the capital asset um, really provides a much broader, longer uh, outlook um, in terms of where we're, our financial position is at. And it also makes for much more efficient uh, updates. Um, so it, it's, I guess uh, this is where I maybe interject my opinion. <laughs> It's, it's probably worthwhile to keep them separate and, and focus on completing the asset management uh, in, a, in a very strong position and then focusing on the, uh, the Rath Trevor Trail. If I may, Your Worship, um, through to Councillor Chandler, one of the items that we've discussed is that um, if we had a better asset management system, we could have more easily addressed the discussion Council had earlier um, about changing road standards or looking at different uh, standards for cross-section. Right now, we don't have any ability to, say, plug in arterial road, uh, change light standards, you know, what would the cost be? And so ultimately, when you have a better asset management system, you can kind of run analysis and um, change scenarios that are a little bit more accurate in terms of um, costing out certain different cross-sections of road, for example. So. Um, asset management has been on the books for quite a while, but we've had staffing challenges. Um, Joe wasn't with us at, at the time, and um, I think it is a relatively um, important thing anyway on the staff side because it just helps us provide information to council to support your decision making. And it won't be perfect right away, but it's something that we, I think, have to start building so that we can actually um, kind of look at a baseline for the infrastructure. And then it helps us with things like um, life cycle analysis uh, even replacing vehicles, you know, a lot of these things have come up at this council and we just don't have the metrics or the information um, like at hand um, to start giving you proper answers on some of those things. So asset management would greatly help us in that regard. If I may, Your Worship, uh, just uh, as a comment on this, is, uh, I, I have to admit I'm disappointed um, that the uh, asset management has taken a priority. Um, I have the Rath Trevor Greenway project that was uh, handed out by uh, Mr. Figuera uh, it, a few months back anyways to us, and uh, I recognize the fact also that the Rath Trevor Greenway, Greenway project was actually um, started by the previous council, previous to this one. 
And uh, so it got pushed back onto us. And then uh, during, uh, during the first year type of thing, many of our constituents anyways have contacted us and said that this is a very important project and they were looking forward to this getting done. So uh, as per Councillor Chandler's suggestion, I would hope that maybe, I understand what you're saying about the asset management uh, uh, being very important, but I would also think that maybe at some time in uh, 2020, maybe near the tail end of it, anything that is going to take anything like requests for meetings with the RDN, as the mayor has suggested, uh, very graciously has, has asked the RDN to, you know, to get on, on to the, uh, the program here, which is amazing, Good, it's great news. But the thing is, anything that's going to be kind of laid out so that maybe if we can hit the ground running in 2021, that would be great, you know, just to have something in the tail end of it. Because if we're starting at 2021, then I, the completion for this project is, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, it's, it's getting drawn out longer and longer and longer. And I had conversations with the previous council about this, and here we are again. So I just, I'm, I'm, I'm saddened to say here that it's been uh, delayed again. Um, I, I understand your reasoning, um, but that's my feelings. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any other questions? Any other comments? Please go forward. So, Public Works, this is Appendix A, page four. Um, there's just one item, one spending package Langara silt control. Uh, we did have an item in the budget for this and uh, it, it was slightly less than this but it's um, there's a spending package for this in 2020 and forty thousand dollars I believe that's to build a some sort of catch basin or something to catch uh, city runoff that runs through Craig Bay's um, pond so our runoff runs through their pond and so we're trying to catch all the materials and stuff that might come from our runoff before it hits the pond so the water that goes to the pond is uh, cleaner. And then the uh, $5,000 is just ongoing maintenance of that. So that's the public works operating adjustments, um, engineering operating adjustments. Uh, we're uh, proposing to extend the LED um, lighting program. Uh, we currently had a five-year program ending in 2020. So the proposal is to extend it another four years longer. Uh, that is funded from gas tax. So the initial program was to replace all the lights along 19A with LED lighting. So uh, it's just a request to extend that program further. And the other item is just, uh, this is a standard item. Um, we only budget this one year at a time. It's minor works adjacent to adjustment or to development. So if there's some sort of development happening somewhere that we can't budget for this ahead of time because we don't know about the development or what works might have to be done, they dig up the ground and find that our pipes are in worse shape than we thought or something. So we have a little bit of money to, without having to run back to council each time because that delays it. Well, the road's opened up. We have some money that we can go through and say, yeah, let's change that or get that fixed right now without while the road's open. So. Councillor Fraz. Through the mayor to Mickey Butterworth. I'm just curious what our gas tax fund is at currently. I don't have the number on top of my head, but it's over two million right now, our reserve. Maybe two and a half million. Thank you. Please. So page five of the appendix, so I'm not gonna go through all these. I might, uh, I might just uh, highlight a few uh, because it's three pages long of this. There's just a ton of numbers. This is, just shows the extent of the changes we made to our budget planning this year. Part of these changes were made to accommodate the asset management along with the one project we were talking about. There's other ones where we've tried to lighten the load. So there's time to get asset management done. Um, that's a project we've had on the books for years that we never seem to get finished, um, partly because the workload uh, and the staffing, it, it requires a lot of internal staff time to complete that project. And um, so we're trying to free up some space in, in our work plans so that we can actually move forward with that project. So some of these changes are to accommodate that and some of them are just changes and some of them are price increases. So I'm just gonna uh, talk about a few of them I've highlighted uh, on my page. 
So Finholm Street, this is a cost increase. Uh, so roads, Finholm, Hearst, so $480,000 increase and a $40,000 increase from what we previously had. So that's the increase itself. So it just shows how much the project costs have been going up from our previous plans. Um, the Highway 19A, McMillan to 4A, uh, those are all new projects that have been added on there. So it's paving um, along 19A. Uh, so we're doing that in, rather than the old, it, it was one project before, but it was further out in, in our plan. And we're proposing to break it up into four separate projects because to try and do that the timing of doing that is probably going to be during the summer and to try and do it all at once is going to be major disruption to the uh, tourism and stuff we have so we're going to break it into smaller sections and hopefully avoid summer peak times for the smaller sections and so do it over four years as opposed to doing it all in one year um, what else have we got uh, memorial avenue oops um, where's memorial on here on the next page. So Memorial, so that's a cost increase. You can see we've um, pushed it out one year, but the cost has gone up from 520 to 1,150,000. So big cost increase there. Um, the one right underneath it, uh, Highway 19A to Pioneer, that's a new project added into the plan. The next two are cost increase again. So you can see there's some fairly significant cost increase to some of our projects. Um, this item, Moss Avenue, 4A to Craig. Uh, oops, can't click there. Um, that's a, we did have some money in the budget. This is the project that was deferred by council to next year. Um, it was in our plan, but we did the budget, it, the bids were so much higher than our budget that it was deferred. So there is a cost increase uh, to this. Um, so the new budget amount or the increase that we need in there is 704,000 for the roads part of that, so. Um, what other ones have I got? So those are the ones I just wanted to highlight, some of the cost increases that we're coming up with. Mr. Uh, Butterworth, if I could. Yes. So the Memorial, or I'm sorry, the Moss Avenue 4A to Craig Street, 704,000, is that taking into consideration building it the same way as what it was originally designed at, rather than making any changes to it, or and I'm, I'm looking over your shoulder, Lucky, <laughs> to our acting director of engineering and, and asking him if, if this is $704,000 is, are we stuck on what, what it was before? If I may, uh, through your worship, um, yes, the, the number that's there represents uh, kind of a worst case scenario build out of that road. If we uh, build it out uh, uh, with, with a lesser curb gutter uh, surface drainage system and uh, walkway, uh, that would uh, of course be reduced, but uh, it should preclude us from having to come back and ask for additional funding. Um, so it's, it's kind of a safe budget number. safe budget number but what it does is it distorts as we go along if we if we did that to all the different projects that we're dealing with four or five years from now we're going to be showing a deficit in our capital expenditures that may not in fact be a deficit if that makes sense uh, yes yes you're, you're, you're correct um, it, it's it provides a number that's it's safe just for the, the 2020 year. Um, of course, we're working on a, on a revisit for uh, what local road standards would get applied in different areas. And when we come back with that, hopefully before final budget, we should be able to refine this uh, uh, a little bit, so. Okay, so the question that I have, the big one coming up now, is will we have those, that information, those changes, proposed changes, whatever we wanna call them, Will that uh, be done for the final version of our budget? Uh, yes. Okay, I can, I can hold you to that. Yes. Okay, everybody heard them. We're gonna hold you to that. All right, so then we will, it, there's some monies here that will be coming out, hopefully, at the end of the day. Yes, the answer is yes. Yeah, it'll be up to council's discretion, <laughs> whatever okay. you tell. Thank you. 
Thank you. So, so this budget was put together based on the current standards we're using. So if, yes, if council changes those standards or we alter things and then we, then, and it does reduce costs and that will be reflected in the next budgets. But for this purpose of this budget, it's basically reflective of what we've been doing in the past and what our current uh, um, rules and regulations indicate how we should do things, so, okay. So anyway, so that was uh, some of the increases in roads and in drainage. It's, uh, again, some, some big increases in some. We've got Finholm um, is a budget cost increase. You can see that down there, $1.1 million increase in that one. So some fairly significant increases from what we had in our previous plans. And, and more, it's the same. Uh, Council has the appendix and it shows, you know, which ones are budget increases and uh, we've pushed some projects out, we've deleted a few projects um, and brought a few projects forward as well. So. And the last item on there is just uh, uh, the works adjacent development. So we had one up in the operating section and this is the one in the capital section. So if if there's a development or a construction and they're digging it up and there's something they find something of the city's or, or, or developments proposed or they start doing something and we know we want to do something in there, this is for a larger repair or larger replacement than the other one. The other one's more of an operating, it's a smaller amount, $40,000, but if there's a large one that needs to be done, um, again, there isn't time to come back to council for these things uh, because the road could be opened up, they could discover our pipe is in terrible shape and we need to do something about it and we may actually have to do a fairly long section. So this just gives us some flexibility to do that. Just one more question and I'm gonna go back to the acting director again if I could. With all of these projects on here, are we extremely comfortable that we will be able to complete all of these projects that are listed for 2020? Right through your worship. Uh, Sorry, I'm not picking on you. It's just <laughs> these are the questions for you. Yeah, no worries. Um, yes, we've we've reduced the scope given uh, given the efforts and resources that we think we're going to need to some of the, the larger uh, projects that we have. We've uh, we've pulled back, pushed things out, and uh, kind of balanced the the near term five year uh, projects. Uh, so even uh, the aforementioned local roads, we've we've kind of balanced a couple out or in uh, a year or two to uh, juxtaposition things so that. Uh, we're not, uh, we're not burdening the five-year budget with, with some decisions that have to yet to be made. So um, it's, we're pretty safe with it. So. so you're gonna be able to accomplish everything that's on the 2020 list? That's right. Okay, thanks. If I may, Your Worship, I, I'd just like to ride on that uh, question, if I may, to uh, Mr. Doxy as well. Um, I, I just counted like, 10 projects in 2020 and it just seems to be to be very ambitious and just just recognizing uh, the projects that we've been able to accomplish for the last 10 years that <laughs> I've been watching carefully and so so all that I'm suggesting is that it, it seems really ambitious so the, the mayor's question of, about getting it all done it seems to you say some of the projects were brought forward and so forth is like it's like really adding to your misery it, it would appear but it seems very ambitious to to have and just based on past history is all i'm going on fma3 worship um uh, councillor o'brien yes you're you're right there are uh, a few uh like hearst memorial uh, uh moss there's a few pr projects in the listing that have uh, a significant amount you know beyond the 75 percent level of engineering that's completed so that are they should be at a tender ready state before year end so um, they should be in a good position to 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 go to fruition for 2021 or 2020 uh, without without difficulty or strain on the department. If I may, Your Worship, actually further to that, um, you've counted 10, but approximately half of them are the same projects. It's just there's a drainage and a road component, so it's so there might be 10 items, but if there's a drainage and it's the same description as the roads, it's the same project. It's just the underground and the above ground. So. So the number of them are reduced from that. But. Uh, and just actually these last three slides are really just the adjustments we've made to the capital. So we are gonna, the next slide is um, 
Appendix B, um, which lists all of our minor capital and capital projects for the next five years. That, again, was provided to Council last week. Um, I don't want to go through, I'm going to just open it up, but um, uh, unless Council wants to, I don't really want to go through item by item because it's going to take a long time. Um, the list was provided if Council has any questions about any of the projects or wants further descriptions of them, then I think we would just open it up for questions on that. Unless Council wants me to go through the line by line here, it's uh, Appendix B, as you can see, it's uh, seven pages long. So um, I will go to the, I'm gonna go to the bottom of it just to show um, the, the total, the summary total of all these things. So, this is what they all sum up to um, for the capital fund. 6.4 million of capital projects in 2020, uh, 5.6, 5.2, 7.8, and 8.2 million in 2024. The funding for these things is the taxpayers funding this row here. So 4.4 million is funded by the taxpayer, 4.1, 3.7, and then 7.4 and 5 million. So the last couple of years, fairly significant amounts funded by the taxpayer and the rest of the funding is coming from carry forwards or grants, uh, developer contributions, DCCs, uh, gas tax, you can see we're funding a bunch from the gas tax, and uh, we actually have one project in 2024 which is a sports field. Again, I know we're doing a study right now on a pool and, and sports facilities and stuff, so that may change depending on what happens with that study, but we've got in there $2 million right now for a sports field in 2024, one million to be funded by grants if we get a grant and one million funded by debt. So it's basically in the budget as a, as a uh, placeholder that we want to do this project. Uh, the funding is from borrowing and from grants. So, so if there's any items specific, I, what, does council wish me to go through the list of items um, or have any questions on any of the items? If we could just go back to, I'm sorry, I know you just wheeled it up one way, but all the way down to where it showed what's coming from this, from uh, from the taxpayers, yep. if you would, the three million and and so on, just just so there's an understanding that 4.371 million dollars comes out of the 14 million dollars that we collect in, in from the taxes. Yes. Is, is, correct or and other fees that we might have yes yeah but not from anything that the government gives us no no okay. we have, that's where that's we have where some grants here for yeah. these grants here relate to the um, facilities for the uh, gathering place and the uh, performance theater mm -hmm. that's what those grants are most primarily relating to there's a couple small ones in there also for the fire department and stuff but primarily that's what that is and then there's some developer contributions or donations that we have and DCCs. So we have quite a range of funding, but you can see that the vast majority of our capital is still funded by the taxpayer. That's fine, but I think it's important for everybody to understand that that $4 million, is, yeah, there's out of the 14 million, so there's still $10 million left to cover the operational expenses for the city. Is it just so that we are all looking at how the, the dollars are flowing through. Right. And if we increase, significantly try to increase capital expenditures, it, then that's going to come directly from additional uh, revenues from the uh, re from property taxes or real yes, estate Yes, if we taxes. look at 2023, for example, there's very little funding from other sources, and we have a fairly heavy capital year of 7.8 million, mm -hmm. 7.4 funded from the general taxpayer. We don't collect enough taxes and revenues to actually fund that, so right we'll see when we get to our um, reserves what that's doing to our accumulated surplus right now our accumulated surplus is fairly healthy but when we run into large fundings coming from the taxpayer we don't collect enough on an annual basis so we have to pull it out of our accumulated surplus uh, and that really knocks our accumulated surplus down and we'll see that later on however once you get out past two years the rest of it is just best guesses in the fact that we could be getting significant uh, increases in the gas tax, for example. Last year they came back and they doubled 
doubled the gas tax to us. So there's, there's other funding that may end up showing availability as we move down the road. Yes, and, and including grants. And, and grants, yes. we, don't, we don't budget other than the one year in there if we budgeted for grants for the sports field. We don't generally budget for grants because we don't know what we're going to get, but we could get $2 million in grants in this five-year plan or even That's more. That's right. So that um, would, that and would that, adjust. And that improves enough. things if that happens. Okay. Um, so, yes, there could be lots of changes as we go on. But exactly. at this point, this is, our, this is what we have right I now. I understand. And, it, and it's a great job so far. You've done, done amazing with the numbers. You got your answer? You covered my question and comment. There was just going to be the prediction of grants okay. that part out. So. Yeah. Once you it once past this year and, and into early next year, you're, you're, you're kind of guessing at best. Okay, so we'll move on from that. Um, so this is, as I said at the start, uh, again, a very busy page, but it's just a sample of what the budget bylaw would look like. It's actually two slides long. There's so much information. Um, so it's a five-year bylaw. It shows our funding sources, 21 million, so our taxes. You say, why isn't this 14 million? Because there's other taxes in there, such as um, included in this, such as our 1% tax that we get for the utilities. Um, I don't include that as property taxes, but I included it up here as property taxes. And a couple other little items that increase our property taxes up to 15 million. So. Total revenues of 21 million fluctuates around depending on what our grants are or DCCs are. Uh, our expenses, including depreciation of all of our uh, capital assets, 19 million. So we actually have a net income from operations. Um, if you're a business, this is essentially similar to what your statements might look like. Uh, but we're a municipality, so we don't end there. So this looks really healthy, we're doing really well, but um, this doesn't include the capital funding which has to be funded from somewhere. So again, this would all be on one page if I didn't have it on the PowerPoint. Uh, it's two pages long here. So we've got capital expenditures, significant numbers, um, principal payments, uh, long-term debt, uh, transfers to reserves, and the various other things so that in the end, our cash surplus, or deficit in this case, we have a deficit every one of the years, and that's being funded from our accumulated surplus. So, um, so our healthy accumulated surplus at this point is not so healthy by year five of our plan. So anyway, so that was just sort of to show council what ultimately in the end um, you would be adopting when we adopt our bylaw. Can I, can I ask you, and you, you're probably going to address it shortly, I'm sure, but um, the situation for debt for the city, do you, do you have a slide somewhere in here that's coming up that shows where our debts are and, and so on? Um, we have Because very that's the one I'm the most yeah. proud of. But, you know, yeah, we, city. Uh, I don't have a slide on the debt uh, because the general, I'm dealing with the general fund and there's very little debt. But uh, and I also don't have a slide in the water fund where we have more debt, but I will add one in before the water, before we present the water to show you where our debt is. But in the general fund, um, I can't remember the number, but it's, it's a very small number that we have like left in the general six fund. Six or seven hundred thousand dollars or something? Yeah, very small number. So, yeah. uh, um, but now in the water fund, because we've had to borrow for ERWS, uh, we do have um, 5.6 million in new debt how much of that is coming from DCCs? Uh, it'll be funded 100% from DCCs. Okay, so it's not really DCCs. the taxpayers yeah. of, uh, yeah. of it's not the Parksville rate are not on the hook for the 5.6 million. The reality is, just so, so everybody understands, the reality is, is that we're, the city is probably in debt a grand total of about $800,000. Is that, would that be a fair statement? I'm asking, not, not telling, by the way. Um, it's, I, I, I don't Just remember the number off the top of my head, but yeah. it's a very small number, yes. Yeah, it's, okay. it's under a million dollars for and sure. It's, and so, it's yeah. due to be paid off yeah. to almost and, and zero over the next three or four years, if I'm it, not mistaken. If we didn't have to borrow, by 2022, we would have be cleared, I think, or 2025, actually. 2025, is, uh, I think, is, is the end. But 2022 would have cleared our water fund, I believe, except we had the new yeah. borrowing. So. Okay. Yeah, so, so the city has done there, very There's well. probably, in all of Canada, there's not more than a half a dozen cities that are in as nice a shape 
from a, from a debt load as what Parkstall is. I haven't done that, that research, but I would, but I would, uh, I would tend to agree. There's probably very few that uh, have such little debt. Yeah, and th and that's something that we should all be proud of. The city of Parksville has has been managed very well over the last, well, some 75 years, 74 years and change. It's been managed very well. So, um, from the last slide, we saw that we were. Uh, chipping away at our accumulated surplus. Um, so in the five years, again, barring no grants or other things happening and everything going the way our plan shows, we'll be down to 700,000 in 2024 from currently right now at 10, 11 million at the end of 2019. So it's just being chipped away at through the capital uh, and whatnot, but as you said, either items that we could get, grants, uh, the increase the gas tax grant, whatever it might be, that will change those numbers somewhat. Um, it is still disconcerting to see the next five years so far negative. It is gonna be a bit of a challenge to collect enough grants and other sources of revenues to knock that down. So that is a bit disconcerting that those numbers are that high. And this is just it on a, what it looks like on a chart there, so. So that's the end of that. So other items to be considered. Um, this item here is not a large item, but I put it on here because it's, it's a little, I guess a discussion we should have with council on where we want to go with our rental houses and, and our um, community centers and other things like that. Are we gonna spend a lot of money on them to maintain them and keep them up? Or are we going to, um, we're not in the rental house business and, and things like that. So do we want, how do we wanna go? So there's a proposal to put a heat pump in at uh, the Foster Park. We have a rental house in Foster Park. Um, so that was just put on here. That's not currently in the budget, but it's a proposal that came forward. And so it, it might need further discussion from council on where we want to go with our rental houses. Do we keep them? Um, do we become a landlord or do we divest ourselves from them, or, or what do we do with these things? So, uh, so that's there just sort of as a discussion point, and um, and then we have uh, ongoing Oceanside Community Safety Volunteers Grant. They requested five thousand dollars for 2019, and then an ongoing grant for a certain program. And I think uh, the uh, CAO would uh, speak to that, if I may, or if we may. Thank you, if I may, Worship. Uh, this item is one that we're needing some further direction on because council provided um, approval in principle for a grant, one-time grant for 2019 for the Oceanside uh, Community Safety Group. Um, they since came back to staff though and said they would like to defer that because um, there's a, some sort of logistical issues, I guess, with that group where they're looking at breaking off and forming a new society. And so at the staff level, we're recommending that that be brought back to council with the new um, situation that the, uh, that group finds themselves in. We do anticipate that would happen and there'd be more information before final. Um, so council may wanna just defer this until final budget. It's not a huge item, um, but we did put it before council because there is um, that ongoing every year, five, uh, five year item, a request to have that as a line item. Um, so if council agrees or provides some direction today, we will certainly either bring it back for final or try to get more information for provisional. Um, we, in, we heard from the group that they should know the status of their society application in a couple of weeks. So that's what that one's about. Okay, and so there's um, three other items there that were late submissions and they are not currently in this budget, but require some consideration from council. And I will let, uh, the first item is uh, crime prevention through environmental design. Uh, that's what SEPTED stands for. Um, so they want 24,000 and 40,000 for some changes to the fleet building and some landscaping. So I will defer those to the uh, if council wants further information on those to the uh, director of operations. Do we want to 
speak to them or not? If I may, um, if you could go back one slide. Do you want to do it? Okay, do the September okay. one. You get the other two. All right. Um, thank you, Your Worship. Um, so the SEPTED or crime prevention item came up um, because we have experienced uh, a significant number of vandalism or mischief uh, incidents in the last year. We thought it might make sense uh, to basically be as proactive as we can and identify each year a number of projects where we could go into a city facility or a park and do a bit of an assessment on what might reduce the crime in that particular location. Uh, crime prevention through environmental design is a, a body of sort of an architectural um, and uh, community safety um, best practices where they have things like increasing lighting, um, putting uh, more eyes on entrances and things like that, uh, looking at landscaping, so trespass inhibiting shrubs, um, you know, strategic placement of benches and bike racks and things like that so that people can see, um, you know, where items are so there's reduced crime uh, opportunity. And so uh, we've been kind of dealing with this through a number of different budgets. We have a graffiti budget and a vandalism budget. So we kind of, in parks, so we kind of take money away from that sometimes, but we haven't had a strategic or planned approach to it uh, to date. And we felt at the staff level that it's happening enough in different areas that it might make sense to prioritize, for example, uh, PCTC one year, the community park another year, Foster Park a different year, or or based on complaints or incidents that happen, we could also um, tailor some strategic direction to a particular area. Um, so we thought it might make sense to put a budget aside, and if we didn't use it, obviously it would just uh, roll into the following year to be used for a different situation. So that's what that is about. Can and you uh, explain the, the other two, if you would, please? Sorry. Um, so then, and a, and a good example, I just wanted to follow up on, on uh, the CAO's um, comments there. A good example is our, uh, our manager of operations came up with a solution for uh, next to the uh, city hall here, the uh, cobbled stones. Uh, we had a lot of camping and uh, um, issues going on here just next to the library and we were able to put that in there uh, to take care of that problem and it's uh, it's done quite well. It's really solved that issue. So that's just kind of a little, a little mini project that would potentially come out of a budget like that. With the, with the other uh, heat and AC solution for the fleet building, um, what we have is uh, with the new, uh, um, there's a couple of issues there, with the new sign equipment that uh, we've been able to purchase, we're, we're now capable of, of producing uh, um, many different kinds of signs uh, in-house, which is awesome. Um, one thing, though, is, is the machine itself. Um, it has uh, heat lamps in it, and uh, uh, what's happened is um, we have a sign shop, but the, uh, the uh, HVAC system in that sign shop is not basically non-existent in terms of trying to dissipate the heat and it becomes uh, certainly in the middle of the summer as well uh, quite a difficult space to be working in so this uh, this amount of money here is to try to correct that uh, also uh, the meeting room just up, up uh, above the um, uh, sign shop um, it also is is lacking in uh, in uh, uh, fresh air uh, supply of fresh air and, and AC and uh, is in the heat of the summer uh, uh, will become quite unbearable there. So um, unfortunately it was designed, you can't even open a window up there <laughs> to get fresh air in there. So that's what that is, is to correct that issue. Um, the operations yard uh, parking lot and landscaping, uh, very early on in the uh, ERWS uh, project, there was some uh, component of the project that was going to address uh, some parking uh, and landscaping. Um, in, in, in at the yard, and that was taken out quite early on because the estimates we were getting back on that was uh, uh, it was too high. It was a million dollars, if not more than a million dollars, I believe. So uh, early on, uh, uh, it was taken out. Uh, right now, we're left with uh, w once the project is complete and the uh, contractors' buildings are taken out of there. We're left with a, a, a very inadequate parking area. Right now, um, 
most of it is uh, is taken up by staff, and we're par double double parking on the entrance roads, just trying to fit in there. And there, there's only a couple of spaces even left for the public to be able to park. Um, so uh, that money is is uh, a, amount of money we'll be able to put in a uh, proper paved parking lot there and, and put some drainage in. Um, that's what that uh, bit of funding is for there. Further considerations, and I think the CAO is going to address these items as well, I'm afraid. Uh, thank you for me, Your Worship. Oh, um, so these are items where there's still some uncertainty for uh, the provisional budget, and we are expecting to have more information on most of these, obviously, by the uh, final budget. Um, but we wanted to flag for Council that they're not currently reflected in the provisional budget. Uh, the first one is the music venue um, in the community park, and so most folks will be aware that a grant application has been submitted um, for a, a very large portion, um, about 73% funding for that item, but there will be some operational and potentially some other costs uh, associated that the city would be on, um, online for. We also have the, the grant application for the gathering space in the community park. Um, we are expecting to know the results of those two grants um, early in the new year, so there will be more refined budget implications for the final. We also would like some council direction on whether or not to embark on a DCC or development cost charge review in 2020, and there would be uh, financial implications of that, but also um, some minor costs uh, that wouldn't be included in the normal budgets just for things like um, stakeholder engagement or advertising, um, but the project itself, depending on the way council goes, could have pretty significant uh, impacts on the DCC revenues. Of course, the pool and recreation facility, we've, um, the staff will be bringing a report back to council on November 18th with the results of the um, RFP process. And there will, of course, be um, the $75,000 that was mentioned earlier in the budget is uh, set aside for the contractor or the consultant, um, but there could potentially be other costs if council makes other decisions on that project next year. The parks, trails, open spaces, and um, community park implementation plan we mentioned earlier, we expect the committee to have uh, a closer look and provide some direction on the implementation priority and the tasks that uh, will happen in the next five years. We also have um, uh, open resolution on the books to look at city properties um, and see whether there's opportunities to partner with um, folks who can provide affordable housing, uh, specifically for families. So that will have some cost implications, whether it be waiving DCCs, um, potentially donating land or leasing land for $1. Um, so that needs to be considered. We also have staff looking at our current special event costs. At the moment, we basically don't charge for any special events. We don't charge cost recovery, and um, those things are becoming a bit more of a burden on staff. So we're just looking at a way to ensure that a special event um, is at least covering its own costs so that that's not being spread uh, to others. And we have a memorial bench renewal program which council directed staff to implement in 2020 and it is not a full cost recovery. So there's some, again, fairly minor, I would say, in the bigger scheme of things, but uh, some cost implications for that program. It's also a memorial tree program, so I should say bench and tree program perhaps. Uh, as was mentioned earlier by the uh, acting director of engineering, we have some staff looking at road standards and determining what's the appropriate, appropriate level of um, standard for different categories of roads in the city, and that could have um, quite significant implications depending again on council direction as to uh, where that goes. And we also have a child care gap analysis report that's pending, and um, council has indicated that there's a willingness to look at ways to support uh, child care spaces being uh, increased in the community, and so that would have um, potentially some impacts on budget. And then uh, one other item that we mentioned um, was the community safety volunteer item, which could be an ongoing line item on the budget. Are there any questions at this point? 
Should we also have on that list um, about the evaluation of looking at um, charges for sports fields? And If I may, Your Worship, yes. uh, that item for sports fields specifically is in the parks and trails plans. Um, so that's probably appropriate for the parks and trails committee uh, to review. Um, if if that's uh, something, it was identified as a medium term project in the plan, so five to ten year time frame. And it was recommended that it be done at a regional level so that um, essentially you're not either undercutting your neighbor or um, over overcutting, overcharging, um, basically, so that we're we're having a fair and equitable costing structure throughout the region. Um, so that would be a very large project, I think, just given the the stakeholder and um, specific sport user groups and the need to consult with them. Um, so that's currently, uh, I, I believe, the five five to ten year range. So not envisioned in this uh, permit or cycle. How are we doing? That's essentially uh, the end of the presentation. Um, so I don't know if there's any, if you want to get any further input from the public and then discussion, questions from council, deliberations on some of the items that we brought forward. And All of the above. Let's start with the public. If there's any questions or any comments, please, sir. Hello, I have two questions pertaining to parks and recreation. Uh, the first one, uh, where does the unspent uh, budgeted money uh, that was allocated for pickleball courts show up in, uh, in this presentation? There was money budgeted in 2018 and 2019, and only a part of it was spent. That's correct. That was question number one. And, and that, that's a very, very valid point that the CAO brings up. That what we're talking about here are just the changes to the budget. So if we were going to change something that was adding $10,000 to next year's budget, that's what you were seeing today. Um, it is in our budget in, under surplus, if I'm not mistaken, would it be? Yeah, it's in the 2019 budget, so it will be carried forward, forward. Mm -hmm. in the final budget. It yep. just doesn't show up at this point because it's in... It's assumed it's going to be finished in 2019. Obviously, it's not. Uh, so it will be carried forward um, into the 2020 budget, and I believe it's 320,000 that's in the budget. It's I 300, believe. Yeah, 320. Okay. okay, thank you. My second question is if Council was to approve modifications to existing infrastructure in the community park, could these changes be accommodated under existing budgetary and uh, procedural processes? I'm sorry, could you, could you maybe make it a little bit uh, clearer for us? Uh, well, <laughs> what is I, it you're looking to achieve? We're trying to achieve um, the possibility of uh, getting pickleball courts placed on the existing tennis court in the park and modifications to the uh, lacrosse box to accommodate nine courts because the uh, other proposals that have been put forward to uh, place a pickleball facility in the uh, community are basically unworkable. All right. We, uh, we do have uh, a program that we could present at a later time to the council to, uh, I think, to, to make some compelling arguments for our case. So that's about all I can say now. Appreciate that. As you've made note, that we have this 320,000 of which some of it has already been spent. So what the net amount is is what we have left to to create these pickleball courts. That's that's the first issue, and we all know because we've had these discussions a number of times that the pickleball courts, the cost of these pickleball courts, are now significantly higher than what was originally anticipated. 
So we, we need to look at it before we can, um, we can do it. So yes, we'd be interested in talking to you about what it is you have in, have in mind, but uh, we can go from there. Thank you very much. Anything else from anybody? All right, council. Any questions from council? You guys are awful quiet tonight, or this afternoon, rather. Councillor Chandler. Thank you, uh, through your worship, to uh, Director of Operations. Um, uh, Vaughn, I was just wondering, when we talk about that $600,000 um, package to, to do the uh, City Works Yard, is there... Um, a plan B on that one as far as uh, being able to come up with something fairly adequate and uh, you know maybe not quite as glossy let's say as the 600,000 would bring if I may your worship through to Councillor Chandler uh, certainly there is I mean this is this would be a paved parking lot I mean uh, what would we be left with uh, a significant amount of money is the pavement um, if we weren't uh, able to have a paved parking lot, we'd be uh, uh, um, basically having a gravel parking lot and uh, having to maintain that um, throughout the year. So uh, really that would be the only savings. That 600 grand is, is um, basically a paved parking lot with uh, uh, grass boulevard areas. It's not, it's not uh, not as fancy as the original uh, uh, landscape design uh, that was pulled out of the contract. Thank you. Follow up uh, through your worship again to Director of Operations, uh, Von Figaro. Um, so I guess with that being said, is there a possibility of doing part of the pavement um, and, and just say where you're parking the vehicles, uh, where there's not as much traffic, that that could be attained uh, through just a gravel surface? Is that, again, is that a possible savings there? If I may, your, your worship, through to Councillor Chandler. Um, certainly, that's what we'd be left with. If we want to do any kind of savings, it would. It, we're basically talking about um, how much of a paved area we can we can afford. So, uh, and I suppose over over time we could we could add uh, pavement in the budget rather than having it all in one shot. Uh, but that's that's reflecting having it all in one shot. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, a question uh, further, I believe it would probably be directed to Mr. Figuera as well. Um, m my question being, uh, now that uh, we have a, a park committee that's going to be uh, working with staff anyways to implement the master community master park and regular uh, park uh, recommendations anyways, uh, we're finally going to get to that, um, but there's been no funding allocated for any of that if we want to implement any of the suggestions that have come out of that master master plan. I'm a little concerned about that because I'm going back into the parks and facilities and I see that other than there's a uh, in 2020 a request for 20,500 for the playground equipment. But as I recall from the master plan, it was for the community park, it was considerably more, uh, more suggestions that is going to cost for more funding. Um, is, I guess my question is, is there possibility, like <laughs> I'm going back to the Mr. Doxy's plan here anyways of his aggressive road, road is, there, is there, are the road improvements and the infrastructure improvements absolutely necessary or could one or two of them be pushed back because it seems like uh, we've put through a master park plan and now I believe that we're going to be gutted because there is no funding allocated at this point or should, as the CAO has already mentioned, that we should be looking at that as well. It's an unknown at this point because we haven't come up, but I'm pretty sure that any of the recommendations from the Master, master Park Plan is going to cost money because I, I'm familiar yeah, with the recommendations. Okay. So the question is, 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 can any of the road projects be slid back or do we just have to uh, incur increased costs? Can or am I missing something that, you, that I don't see here? Can I, if I could just interject for a second. The 20,000 that you're seeing there is over and above what's already budgeted at 30,000, so it's a total of $50,000 in, in there. Okay, so that's the... Yeah, 50,000, it's 50, that's correct. Yes, please, go ahead. If I may, Your Worship, oops, sorry. 
Um, some of the items identified in the um, community park master plan are already in the budget um, because they came forward sooner, um, but those things are, are the items that we're wanting some more, um, like a new lens on, I guess, with this committee because they were approved in November of 2018 prior to this council. Um, but a lot of the items in the sort of, I would say up to 2022 are already in the five-year plan. And then after 2022, I don't believe we have any specific amounts in there, but um, many of the items are already budgeted, at least in a, a rough cost estimate. We had um, several items, sort of uh, scope sheet items that we'll certainly provide to the committee uh, that came forward. And it includes the drainage plan, um, the, um, the circulation, the, the pedestrian and vehicle circulation plan, for example, um, and a number of other items that were identified. So those are not the current plan? Uh, yes, or they're already in the existing budget for that particular year. So for 2020 or 2021 or 2022. Just so that we're all clear, and correct me if I'm wrong, Lucky, is, is that this is not our budget. This is, in fact, just uh, the spending packages, or a good portion of it is the spending packages, which means the increase to the budget from last year, is, if I'm not uh, mistaken. So that's why we're only seeing little bits and pieces of some of this. So, so yes, your money is, is there and well protected. <laughs> I'm being told that the next uh, meetings will be December 3rd and December 10th at 2 p.m. Here, yes, sir. If I may, Your Worship, <laughs> I'm just wondering about these items. I, at this point, I don't, I'm just going to be bringing back the same budget because I haven't heard of any changes. Do we want to discuss any of these items and decide whether they're going in the budget or not in the budget um, or any of the items that are in the budget? Does anybody want anything removed or are we happy with everything? because otherwise I'm just bringing back, uh, there really isn't any need for another meeting, at least as far as the general fund is concerned, unless, uh, unless there's gonna be any changes. So. Councillor Chandler. Councillor Chandler. Hey, well, I'll get back to you in a second on that, Lucky. Please. Thank you, Thank you through your mayor. Uh, just a comment, I would like to see the, uh, the parking lot, uh, the city works yard just scaled back. That would be one of my recommendations. I'm not picking on, uh, Director of Operations tonight, but that's uh, this year. Okay, Councillor O'Brien, did you have your hand up? Oh, okay, okay. Um, go ahead. And just on this screen here, just to let everybody know, none of these items are currently in the budget. Okay. So the budget I showed you and the accumulated surpluses we have, none of these items are included. So that's where I was looking yeah. for: Are we going to include these? Or are we not including these? Or where are we going? So with anything, or is there anything that I've shown you that's included that needs to change or council's happy with everything? To Councillor Chandler's point, it, zero of the 600,000 is actually in the budget at this point in time. Nothing's gone in, so. Councillor Greer. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I'm just interested if we added these up, that would be over a half a percent on our, on our budget. Which, which, which we're not, which we haven't currently budgeted for at the 3%? Um, well, some of the, these items are one-time items, so the, it's hard to equivalent them into a percent because they're not ongoing items. Um, our accumulated surplus at the end of 2024 is was 624, I think, 1,000. I can't remember what the number was. Oops. Um, 694. So these items here total 664,000. So if they were all put in as is, we would still have $30,000 accumulated surplus at the end of 2024 in our plan. And we do have to have a positive accumulated surplus. Uh, so if we accepted this, our, our uh, taxes wouldn't go up any more than the 3%? Yes, this is all with a 3% tax increase for this year. Okay. Uh, Thank you. What we've seen here. 
Well, that's what that's what I'm asking. If we put all this in there, it's going to increase. Master, um, the fire service review, and, and can somebody explain to me what that is? It's just so refresh my memory. Only because Chief Norris looks like he's needs to talk about something. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, the fire service review is in there to uh, Obviously, there there's some question about what the fire service is going to look like in the future. Yes. Uh, and the fire service review is in there to look. Uh, the idea is a comprehensive review of what services should be delivered, how they should be delivered, staffing, fire station locations, um, just a comprehensive review of the fire service delivery model. Um, this number has been in the budget, I think, since 2017. So it's not a new number. Um, I think it's probably uh, more than enough to do the job, but um, in order to make sure we have enough to cover the full scope, and we're not exactly sure what that is right now, uh, moving forward. My suggestion is is that we would leave that 100000 in there for now until we know where we're going with all of this, and then we've still got until March to be able to withdraw it if, it, uh, if need be at that point in time. If, if everybody's in agreement with that, I think that makes sense. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, just a question through to Mr. Butterworth. So let's just put this all in perspective here and make sure I've got this right. If everything is going through on this extra budget now, in addition to our budget that we already approved, since this is the additions to it, am I correct in assuming that if all of this is going through and nothing else gets cut, that the tax increase for next year will be 3.0%? Yes, based on the information we have, uh, I don't have you know, the actual assessments yet. Yes. Um, so if they come in higher, then we'll actually have, it would actually give us a greater accumulated surplus at the end of the year five, which is really our weak point right now, uh, right. being quite low. Um, particularly if some of those other items that uh, the paving the parking lot or any of those things were put in where it even goes lower so depending on how the assessments come in then um, that's when we really determine what the tax rate is so we're just using our best estimate on assessments right now and assessment increases and growth um, and using 3% as the, the rate and yes so if everything stays as is then 3% is what the rate we would need to achieve this. I just may just follow up, and that includes the inflation rate uh, for the two percent of, of the staff collective agreement. That, that's correct. Inclu that's included in that three yes. percent. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. The finance department deserves many accolades for putting this together, but so do all the departments for for bringing their information in and doing an excellent job at keeping the costs down at this point in time. Congratulations to everybody. Councillor Butterworth, Mayor <laughs> Councillor Butterworth, sorry. <laughs> he just got a promote the demotion. <laughs> um, if I may, just on this screen here, I, I actually just looked at where we were last year in the, uh, in the expense column. And if you exclude this last line amortization, because that's depreciation of capital equipment, so the actual operating expenses, um, we actually cut it 31300 from the 2019 budget. So we actually cut the amount down by 31000 from what the 2019 expenses were. So. Does anybody have a problem with this budget at the way it's sitting right now? I, we may not have to go to the, the, um, the third and the tenth if that's the case. Yeah. But we'll do the other funds, but from the general fund, we're in great shape. If I can just make a suggestion, so council's been supplied with a lot of materials on Friday and Thursday, so not a lot of time to digest them all. You have the spending packages. I don't know if everybody had the chance to read them all. There's a lot there. 
Um, at the next meeting, maybe we just, uh, if council has any items they want to bring back at the next meeting, they can bring back and we could, if we have to adjust great. anything we do, if everybody's happy, then great. I do have to show you the water and the sewer funds, sanitary sewer funds at the next meeting. And then we can just see if anybody has anything they want to bring back from this. How's that sound? Excellent job. Thank you very, very much. All right. I need a motion to adjourn. <laughs> Councillor Fraz and seconded by Councillor O'Brien. All those in favor? Nobody's opposed.